So my wife needed to go to Hobby Lobby to get some yarn for her crocheting. And as I usually do when I go with her, I stop by the stamp and coin section and check out the latest offerings. And I'll show you what I got this time. But first, let me go over today's mail. First, I got this uh, postcard from Haifa, Israel, from Oren Haimeri. Hameri. You might remember Oren from a previous episode where he sent me a packet of Israeli stamps, and I reviewed them. And, uh, and this is my latest correspondence from him. Greetings from Haifa. Beautiful at night as well. Yellow label means it was forwarded from my old address. Warren, I'll have to give you my new address. <laughs> Next, I got another postcard. And this is from a viewer, a YouTube viewer. He says, hi, Ted, my name is Aislinn Thomas. I am an 11 year old stamp collector in California. I love channels like yours, although there are only a few channels like them. I love them. Just wanted to tell you how much I love your channel. Have a nice rest of your day, Aislinn. Thanks, Aislinn, I appreciate that. And I see that it has a Santa Ana, California uh, postmark. And I happened to live in Santa Ana way back. That was the first place I lived in California. When uh, my dad retired from the military, we settled in Santa Ana. I went to Washington Elementary School, Glen L. Martin Elementary School, and then I went to Smedley Junior High, which is now called Carr Intermediate, and then on to uh, Santa Ana Valley High. Although I only went there my first year, uh, my sophomore year. I know uh, the first year of high school now is uh, ninth grade. Back then, ninth grade was still at Smedley Junior High. And uh, the next year, when I became a sophomore, was the first year that the high school went to four years. So I was never a freshman. <laughs> so anyways, thanks Aislinn. And then my last piece of mail is from Gene Wang, who is the uh, newsletter editor for the North Toronto Stamp Club. And each month, their newsletter has a stamp quiz, which Gene shared with the uh, members of the American Topical Association uh, page on, the, on Facebook. And I was one of the correct guessers and got into a draw for the prize. And I was indeed the winner of the drawing for this pack of uh, stamps of Japan. So I'm seeing these stamps for the first time along with you. Some very nice looking stamps. I've, I've done very little with Japan during my collecting career as it is. <laughs> so these are a welcome addition. Anyways, there's two more packets. Very similar in quantity anyways. And this gives you an idea of what they have. 
Oh, let me show you the envelope that came in. Comes with a Margaret Atwood stamp because she asked me what my uh, what kind of topics I collect, and I told her that I collect literature, fiction writers, and books on stamps. So she included Margaret Atwood, who is of course the author of *The Handmaid's Tale*. So thank you, Jean, for those stamps, and I look forward to the next quiz. Now give me a. Now give me a moment to just clear up, clear up this area, and I will share with you my Hobby Lobby haul. First thing that caught my eye as I walked up was a pair of Lighthouse stock books with red stickers on them, which can only mean one thing. Yes, a reduced price, $4.99 each. Too bad there's only two, but I'll take them. And then, uh, look at that. If you need a magnifying glass, there's one. There's another. Some uh, super safe stamp hinges. Ah, another magnifying glass. What else? Another magnifying glass and another magnifying glass. Wow. This is Magnifying Glass Central. Here's some uh, stamp packets or stamp bags. There's some packets. 15. Oh, look at that. Antique stamps. 15 stamps for how much? $4.59 <laughs> for 15 stamps. I, I think I'll pass on that as good as that deal sounds. No, thank you. What else? There's uh, show guard mounts. The stamp hinges we already saw. And let's see. Oh, let's see. Stock pages by Entrust Collecting. Never heard of that brand. So I can't uh, comment on their quality. These are some two pocket pages. They also have these eight pocket pages, double-sided, five pages for uh, how much? Four ninety-nine. Fair enough, I guess. And then uh, they have this H. E. Harris stamp catalog for the U.S. and British North America and United Nations. Let's take a look inside and see how it compares to the Scott catalog. Would it make a good replacement? Uh, $34.95, so it doesn't look too good right off the bat. Although Scott catalog won't give you a nifty picture of Henry Ellis Harris. Right, let's check the listings. The catalog does use the Scott numbering system. Let's see which one we'll compare. And let's look at, oh yeah, let's look at that $5 green Ben Franklin. Number 524, Harris says it's worth $300, very fine hinged. Scott says it's only 170. The used copy of that 524, Harris says is worth 60 bucks. Well, Scott, gives it a value of 35. Ah, you thought Scott was disconnected from uh, actual real, actual prices. Let's take a look at a more recent issue, see if it holds up. Uh, there, here's the 1992 Olympic set, Scott 2611 through 2615. It comes in a strip of five Harris says that strip of five is worth $5.75. Scott says it's only worth $3. I think it's safe to say I'll pass on using Harris as a reference catalog. What else they got? Hmm, I want to buy some stamps. There, here's some U.S. stamps, 300. Uh, worldwide, that's what I want. 300 
worldwide stamps. It's a super value. Yeah. Genuine. And it's a surprise selection. And the price is just $7.99. For 300 stamps, that's less than three cents a stamp. I think I'll give it a go. What do you say? I've mentioned Hobby Lobby in a couple of previous videos and so I've gotten a couple of requests from viewers to do a review of um, the packets that you can get from Hobby Lobby. So that's why I really picked this up. So let's uh, open it up and dig into it. See what we got, huh? Cardboard. A cardboard liner in there too help prevent the stamps from all getting crushed. Oh well. I wasn't expecting that. I these are all on paper. Which partly explains that under three cents per stamp price. All right, that's all of them. Let's see if I can spread these out so you can get a good look at them. We got Austria, Germany, Austria, again, uh, Germany, again, Austria, there's US, kind of funky condition. So, let me go ahead and sort through these a little bit, and I'm not going to do like my regular uh, Kilowatt mixture reviews, I'm not going to catalog and, uh, and, uh, value these because obviously a cheap packet like this it's it's not about the value you get it's about just uh, you know the variety and the number of stamps you get to fill your album spaces so give me a moment to sort these out and I'll be right back with you all right, so I've completed sorting them, and I'll show you what I've got. Here's what it looks like all together. There are 21 countries represented. Here's a pile of damaged stamps that are just, I mean, damaged. <laughs> Stained, torn, folded. So, didn't even count those. So, 21 countries, and they are Australia. Austria, that was one of the major countries, quantity-wise. Belgium. Brazil with two stamps. Canada. Czechoslovakia. France, five stamps. And then Germany with a big pile. East Germany. And then Great Britain, and about uh, all but two of them maybe were Machens, which doesn't bother me because I am rather light on Machens also. And we have Guernsey, Jersey, Ireland came in with a pretty good quantity. Italy and this was this one here is probably the most plentiful stamp with five copies priority mail stamp one loan example for Japan Netherlands Norway and then Poland had quite a few South Africa Sweden, and then a few from the United States. 
So as I said, uh, this wasn't about looking for value. Nothing in there really jumped out at me as being anything other than a, a minimal catalog value. But there was a good variety, 21 countries, and very little duplication, le less than I thought. Uh, well under 10%, I think, and probably even 5%. Uh, so real good variety, although a lot of them, some of them were in uh, you know, pretty ratty condition, but who knows, once they're soaked and then uh, pressed in the, uh, in the drying book, they might look okay. So I think uh, for a, a beginning collector, for a child that you want to get interested in uh, stamp collecting, I think this would be a good mixture to get for them. They'll get exposure to a, quite a few different countries and they'll even learn how to soak stamps. And if they end up not being interested in stamps after all, it wasn't a big investment. So that was my trip to the hobby shop. I did not have a top 10 list ready for this episode, so I'll have one for you next time. So until then, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you all happy stamping.